Yeah, I'm getting ready for him today, T. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting my eye, my eyebrows done oh, today. You God. feel me, dog? I see you no, growing your hair out, no, buddy. I you look good. I don't feel you. No, yeah, I don't feel you. <laughs> Welcome back to Get Your Popcorn Ready. How you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm I'm always good. This is this is, this is it right okay. here. Like we say, that's game. Get day. your popcorn ready, cause we got a very very distinguished guest. Yes, sir. They may not know him, but that's okay. You know, they they going to know him after, after today. This. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you see what I'm saying? Greg I, Pambukian is in the building. In the building. I'm a friend call him of GP. a friend. How you doing, man? I'm all right. I GP. appreciate you coming on, man. Man, it's an honor. Thank you for having me. I know you're yes. busy working in every day, you know, taking the time out to come sit with us for, you know, for an it's, hour, it's man. It's we my appreciate pleasure, you. Brother. That's what's yeah. up, man. Yeah, man. I know a lot of people are, are just starting to watch the show and they're like, man, who is this guy? Who is this bald headed guy? GP guy. Who is this guy right here? Not Gary Payton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, so I had uh, an opportunity to to meet Greg and we we sat outside his shop for about thirty minutes. I was about to freeze, mm -hmm. but I didn't mind it because the conversation went from talking about cars, life. It really got in depth, mm -hmm. and I'm on, on my way home. I called you. I'm like, yo, we got to get this dude on the show. Yep, I remember. Um, yeah. You have an amazing story. Um, I Thank know. You. For me, it touched me because. I've been around guys that have been in your situation. You're going to share with us kind of like how you grew up, you know, going to prison for a number of years, getting out, starting your life over. And, man, you're you're very, very successful. Yep, yep. I'm trying, brother. I'm trying. No, <laughs> you're, you're, doing, you're doing it. Yeah, and just, just so to give it text, you yeah. rode up here in a white Rolls Royce Ghost. <laughs> Conte, so yeah. you, so you're you doing okay. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? You're trying. Um, but no, could we like to talk about people transitioning in and out of their lives, right? Yeah. right. And again, right. I'm just going to go back to, you know, where this love for cars kind of originated for, for yourself. Since I was a kid, really, like ever since I, like I could remember, I've always been into cars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I grew up with it, like, around them all the time. My uncle was a body tech, so when we migrated from Armenia to the States— So you he, weren't born here? No, I was born in Armenia. Okay. Um, I migrated. When we migrated here, a month later, I turned two years old. Okay. So, But I pretty much grew up here. Shout you know out to I mean? the Armenians in the building. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, i just always been around cars. It's always been a passion of mine. I've always dreamed about— like had owning a Ferrari, mm. so I got to own it. Nice, you nice. know. So, but yeah, it was just been up and down, man. But owning a Ferrari, how did yeah. that? How did that come about? You know, because like you said, I mean, not everybody can get exactly. into I mean, a Ferrari. You know, <laughs> how, how did you get money to, to, to own a Ferrari? You know what I mean? Because everybody, you know, and at we, what age? Yeah, yeah we, we what was know. your first car? Yeah, because I know it wasn't your first car. No, was not look, a Ferrari. My my first <laughs> listen. My first car was a nineteen ninety five. Gold Lexus GS three hundred. Oh, that's with, clean though. With two hundred fifty thousand yeah. miles. Ooh. Okay, well he's kind of beat up, but clean. Yeah. clean on the outside. The engine had to <laughs> right. be tired though. Hey, it was fly back then. <laughs> right, right. Two hundred fifty. Yeah. Oh, it was on this last leg. Absolutely. That was my first car. Okay, yeah. and then at, did you like work on that car at all? You just kind of just got in the car, you know? Yeah. Eight, so eight, eight so eight pretty eight. much when I bought that car, it was a mess. So it, he was pretty much a customer of my uncle. Mm -hmm. He was moving out to Miami. So he brought it in, hey, I got to sell this car real quick. Yep. I said, how much you want for it? Mm -hmm. He said, $1,000. So I told my <laughs> uncle, I was like, hey, you pay me 250 a week. Could you pay him? And then I'll just work and pay it off. Nice. And the car was in bad condition, like ketchup all in the interior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love right. the details. He's so the oh, ass I love the, the, the yeah. ketchup. Yeah. Every no, no warranty. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what happened is I cleaned it up. I sanded the whole car. I resprayed wow. it, made it look as new as possible. But okay, it was torn up. Though. So you did. So lie. so you started your love for not only for cars, like the body shop business. Yeah, yeah. Like sanding it down, yeah. repainting yeah. it. Yeah, I like getting my hands dirty. I don't mind. You know what I mean? Wow, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. He's not a diva like you, basically. No. <laughs> what, what, what? That's hard labor. <laughs> My guy, See, it's you, hard labor. You, you're you're quick to mislead our audience, but you know, <laughs> I grew up cutting grass, homeboy, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't get paid. Yeah. Facts, so facts, I got my hands facts. dirty. I know what it is. Facts. So you said you were making twenty five dollars a week. No, at this time. two hundred fifty dollars a week. Two hundred fifty. I'm sorry, yeah. two hundred fifty dollars a week at this time. So then you got your car, and then from there, like you like, I gotta find a better way to make more money to get a bigger, well, better cars. Well, no, it wasn't really the drive. Wasn't really like cars. In general. Okay. So I lost my dad when I was 12, right? 
Mm-hmm. And my mom was a stay-at-home wife. Okay. And she didn't work. She didn't drive. Her English is not like ours. So, okay. like, financially, we were in a bad, bad situation. So, um, my dad used to drive a ice cream truck prior wow. to moving to work with my uncle at the body shop. So, literally, when, when he passed away, we were living for rent. All my mom had was an ice cream truck left. Mm. We didn't have no saved up money. Right, right, right. None of that stuff, right? So that's when I really started, like, my focus went on, I got to make money. For the Be- family, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then 10 months after that, like, my sister got in a in a car wreck right in front of my eyes. Um, pretty much a car struck her, and... Mm. She was nine years old. She she had, I think, like eight to nine plastic surgeries. They reconstructed her whole ankle. Mm. You know what I mean? So now my dad passed away. My sister goes through Within that. the same and, year. And then I just see my mom, like, emotionally collapsing. Yeah. And at the same time, we're having financial, financial trouble. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then, like, literally, I think it was, like, six months, if I'm not mistaken, after that, my mom's brother at 43 passed away from cancer. Mm. So it was, like... Every day I was yeah. walking into the house, it was it was just sad. Mm-hmm. Everything was yeah. sad in my life. Yeah. Like, and then I was having a little bit issues with my uncle because I was like, yo, like, I'm I'm coming here. I'm working all day long from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. You're only giving me 250. I'm driving from the valley to West Hollywood area because mm-hmm. the shop was on Pico. Mm-hmm. Like. So everything was mounting on you daily. Daily, bro. Yeah, so pressure, pressure, so pressure. I kind of left. I kind of left uh, my uncle's shop, and I started working at a at a pizza place. And then there was an ice rink place around around where I lived, and I was going and you know driving to Zamboni, cleaning the ice, staying till like two, three a.m. Because you had guys like renting out, throwing, doing like private hockey games and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I would stay there all night. And then that wasn't cutting it either. You know what I mean? And then at this time, I'm already, like, I'm going into school, to the shop, to these jobs, and I'm like, this isn't cutting it. Right. Like, Not enough money. <laughs> you Not enough money your, coming you in. You're wearing I mean? yourself thin. Yeah, yeah like, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed, bro. Like, yeah. I'm not happy at all, right? So then I kind of migrated to the streets. Right, right. Like, up until my dad died... I was a straight A student. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I've never been the type to get into trouble, go on the streets. I'm just gonna keep it real. Mm. It's like I I wouldn't say I'm using what I've been through as an excuse to go that route, mm-hmm. but at that time, that was your only route. It's, it's it, part it, of your path. Look, it really wasn't. If I had, if I were to say, if I had a like an older male figure to mm. guide me in the right direction, right, I might have not, right, because right. I wasn't really like that. Like I never said. I want to be a gangster or I want to mm-hmm. be a street dude or I right. want to be a drug dealer. No. Right. I don't, I, you know yeah. what I mean? But right. it was just like, at that time, I felt like that's my only option. Mm. Right. You know, like when I look Tough back, place. I'm not ashamed of the stuff I went through, but I've always knew I could have done better. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, know you I mean? was at that fork in the road. Like, okay, yeah. I can go this way. Knowing, okay, if I go this way, there's, there's some consequences, con- some consequences yeah. to yeah. my actions. And I was, and I, to be honest, like I was ready for the consequences. Right at that time, yeah. were we like eighteen, nineteen at this point? Yeah, I would say like close to eighteen. Okay, all right. So was somebody kind of pulling you in that direction, or you just kind of knew? No, I was just like, show me where the money at. Right, right. You know right, what I yeah. mean? It was just one of those. Like, and when somebody takes you and say, like, what's that? What's their definition of okay, young fella, come over here, come with me? Like, what was that move? Well, just like anything in life, you start as an employee first. You know Facts. what I mean? Facts. Yeah. So it's like I started off as an just working for someone. Mm-hmm. Then by the time I was like nineteen, twenty. I separated for myself, and then, like, in my early 20s, I already had, like, seven, eight people working for me. So you wow. kind of learned the ropes the first yeah. year, kind of just observing. Because, look, like, I, did, I didn't know nothing about business. That's a business at that point. Yeah, like, but <laughs> this, like, <laughs> right. in the illegal way. But, right, but, right. But, but it's yeah. like, that, it's that, like that, I that's have to learn. To, yeah. That's yeah. what we try to un- have the especially black community and white community, right? The the black white community brown, sees yeah. a, a CEO at a Fortune 500 company, but we also know CEOs on the street are just as smart, smart. as oh, yeah. some of those companies yeah. that you know the guys at those companies. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, to to hear your story and for you to share your story, this is again, like you said, 
we have this show. We brought you on this show so you can share that because, again, there are a lot of kids today, mm-hmm. right now, right now, that is at that fork in the road just yeah. as you were years ago. Yeah. And you just said earlier, you didn't have a male figure in the household to guide you, to steer you one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. My man, Greg, people watching this show, steer they em. don't have a male fight. They may not steer have em. a male figure mm-hmm. in the household. Guess what? Watching this show, you could be that male story, figure, that yeah. voice. You don't have yeah. to physically be there, but your story can shape, and like you said, put that young individual, man or woman or whatever it may be, in the right and direct them in the right on the right path to yeah. where they need to be because like I said they may be headed down you know to destruction mm-hmm. like I said they may not may not be as fortunate as, as you to yeah. understand yeah. and do what it, do the time that you did get out and become successful so you know we applaud you for coming on here just Absolutely. to share, to, 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 to share your story mm-hmm. you know there's nothing to be ashamed of yeah. because like I said you are walking testimony yeah. of what you know, kids can, you know, overcome. Yeah. And that's what the story is. You yeah. know, it's like once you had your seven, eight employees, like you was like, there's more money out there to be made. Like what was your thought process? It seems like, let me get Look, bigger. Like, you know, you know what it, you know what it was? I started, I took out in my mind that I'm doing something wrong. Right. Right. Cause everything was so perfect. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking it's a corporation. Like yeah. th- it's a business. Mm-hmm. So I'm running it. I never had it in like in my intention, like yeah, it's something wrong, and I get a high off of doing it. No, mm, right. It was just like I'm making good money, I'm living. My mom's taking care of her mortgage is paid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like, did I'm you ever helping. have a number, like a goal in mind? No. So and like, and to hear you much say that, yeah, and I'm you know, it's interesting to hear you say, okay, you kind of just gravitated toward the streets. You didn't want to be in the streets. No, I really didn't. Yeah. And it I was get, like, it was, <clears throat> it was when I first went into that lifestyle, it was real foreign to me. I didn't know how to act because I've been a square before that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like, I didn't know how to act. I didn't have the demeanor. I didn't have the look. I didn't have the slang. None of that stuff. It was like, I'm in like a, a fish out world. of water. You know what I mean? Because my dad always kept me like, hey, let me see that report card when yeah, you come yeah. home. He saw a C, oh, it's on. Yeah. Like, no, you got to learn. You got to go to school. So mm-hmm. that's what I was taught, and that was what I did. I didn't go to school and cause fights or hang out with the popular kids. You know what I mean? So then when my life changed 360 degrees, and I was like, okay, I, I'm into this. I'm going to go all the way. Yeah, and I think figured the, out. The, the, the losing of your, your, your father and – and watching that, you know, obviously mentally your your mom deteriorate, and you saw your sister, you know, um, you know be struck by a car, and obviously you you're starting to have issues with your uncle, and I what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is that you were forced to grow up real quick. Yeah, yeah. real quick. Th- those circumstances quick. Yeah. force you to it. grow up real quick, and it <laughs> forced you to be the man of the house. Yes, yeah. before you're ready. <laughs> before you were really ready. And like I learned, uh, to be honest, like I learned more through my hard times and failing than mm. I ever did. Like, if I, if I go back right now and the way I'm running my business right now and the way I appreciate my employees or the people I come across, mm-hmm. I was, like, before that, I was, like, very, like, judgmental, right? If someone wasn't like me, I was like, oh, no, he's wrong. Mm. Whereas now it's like I go, hey, I don't know where this guy come from, what he been through, why he thinks the way he thinks. Mm-hmm. So before I'm quick to jump the gun and judge somebody or mm-hmm. I take the time. Why is this man like this yeah. woman the way she is or he is? So when did, um, so again, you you got your company going. When did it all go bad for you? I was 26 years old mm-hmm. and five in the morning, I just hear like a boom, right? There was probably like 200 federal agents. Oof. I had U.S. Marshals, Secret Service. Did you? Have, what was your street name at the time? If you had, I, two, I, you I never, never had, had a street, street name, name with two hundred people out there. They no, went like I, I never had Escobar. Like, no, I never here. had like <laughs> I, nev- I never had <laughs> like a nickname. Really? <laughs> none, none of they that. They called you Greg. You, you yeah. went GP, <laughs> right? No, you went GP <laughs> before no. GP. Just Greg, bro. Just, just Greg. Greg. Just Greg. Okay. Square Greg. Square Greg. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so they're out there banging on the dough. Yeah, so I come. Well, hold on, I want to go. No, no, yeah. I, before you go, for the for the fans come right, booming right, right, in. Right, 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 right. <laughs> before he, they come knocking the door yeah. down. You, you, you basically explain too, like 
you understood the consequences, but in one side of your brain, there was no consequences to you. No, there wasn't. Really, what I told myself is, I'll go do 25 to life before I let my farm family starve. <sighs> that's so weird. Straight up. That's so Yo, real. that's crazy. Yeah, like, so real. I didn't care, bro. Yeah. So, okay, I got to process this. <laughs> bro, this is, this is heavy. So like, you, there's that saying, you know what I mean? You don't go into the water thinking about getting wet. <sighs> Man, no, I've bro. never heard that. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I get so, it. so you will it, you... I, at this point, you're willing to risk it all. Yeah. yeah. So at this because point, do to, you have a plan? Like I got to survive. My right. family has to survive. Right. Yeah. So you already, in your mind, okay, you know, okay, you may get caught. So if you get caught, whatever money that you've made, I'm sure you, is there a plan to, you know, take have your family taken care of? I'm sure. See, see that's that's the thing. <clears throat> like, like, I always considered myself a smart individual until mm -hmm. I really got busted. Right. Then okay. I was like, you're really not that smart, bro. Because <laughs> you didn't have no 401k. You didn't have you know no plan. plan. You didn't have the plan. Right. Look, like, <laughs> that's I wanted to make money to obviously help my mom and, you know, support myself. But why? Mm. See, a lot of people want to make what money, but why? they don't know why. What's your right. why? So Whereas you, for now, I know why. Mm. Right. So you know at why? that point, you were just making money and you were just living at the moment. You were just yes. taking care of things as the money came yeah. in. There was no, like, savings. Like you said, no, no. 401k, it was, no nothing. It no. was restaurants, partying, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Right. And then when you get busted, it's like, oh, man, oh that's gone. I'm, I'm really not as smart as I thought I was. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back to the... Yeah, back how, to the... What, what, what how, how... Five in the morning? Five in the morning. Five in the morning. Five in the morning. Yeah. Boom! Because when you hear that knock, is that a distinct knock? Because <laughs> I've had cops knock on the door before, and I, as soon as I heard that knock, I knew... You, you know a police knock. I, I just a regular knew it. pedestrian I just knock. knew that it was the popo at my door. You know what? You know what? It was crazy? So, it, we have the main house in the front, right? And then there was a garage in the back. Okay. So, in the main house, it was my mom, my grandma, and my grandpa. Mm -hmm. My sister was already married out of the house. And pretty much the garage, I had converted it into my own bedroom, my own bathroom and stuff. So when I heard the bang, and I'm I'm not that tall, mm -hmm. I have I have a little like glass on top of the door, mm -hmm. so all I see is like 200 flashlights. Like wow, look. I'm like oh damn, they're here. I I already knew what time yes. it is. Wow. Yes. So it's not like obviously I wasn't happy about it, but right. it's like I wasn't hitting my head on the wall like what's going on. It's like, oh, there I know there what, was no split second saying should I run. No. It's like I'm just gonna walk out and take the. Yeah, I mean, where who, where am I gonna run, bro? I, yeah, I don't. You I know just. What I mean? I, <laughs> right. I've, you it look kind of fast. In, I don't. Right. I don't. No, I'm not. <laughs> I ain't going. I'm not to you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't judging you. You can't you outrun look. 200. You can't outrun 200 up. <laughs> right. If it was one or two, maybe. But yeah, 200. No. Yes. Yeah, and right. they probably had your place around. Yeah. Oh yeah, they had the like side streets, like. So they had been scoping you out Look, for a minute. Yeah, so. <laughs> this ain't no yeah, just, no. we, we just no, coming up, okay, no, yeah, does, no, does were, Greg live here? Yeah, yeah no, they, they, were, they, they know they, Greg they were, lives here. They were scoping it out. Well, you don't know, what I noticed, when you notice them, it's already too late. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And then, like, on top of it, like, r the running factor and stuff, it was like, bro, I had my best night of sleep that night when I got bailed out. Could I was you? like, it's over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's like it's a weird feeling right. so it's like you, it's over so when you went in like how long so how long you went in for like that day so you, so pretty much what happened is that that morning they busted me they took me to MDC in downtown which mm -hmm. is the like federal county you know fingerprints mm -hmm. all of that stuff and then I think it was like 5 p.m. or 4 p.m. was my bond hearing mm -hmm. so my mom had to pretty much sign the house and then the judge made me stand up in, in the courtroom and was like, you know, if you flee or whatever it is, mm -hmm. we're going to take your mom's house. And I was like, I'm not planning on fleeing right. nowhere. I wouldn't do that to I mean? my mom. No. Talk, right. So then I, I pretty much got out on bond. Um, I would think I was sentenced like eight months later, seven okay. months later. Okay. How long were you sentenced for? They gave me 48 months. Okay. So which is four years. Right. Um. So pretty much... But up until that, I've never even been inside of a police station, bro. Now, what was the charge? What was their physical charge? So there was two charges, which is a 1028 and 1029, which are pretty much the same thing, which is aggravated identity theft. Okay. That's so it was more of a blue-collar crime, like fraud. Yep, yeah, okay. You know? All right. 
All right. So then after that, those four years, during those four years, like what was that thought process? When I get out of here, it's back on. Well, look, when, when I get out of here, look, you know. Well, when, when I was, when I was really um, fighting, like fighting the case with the attorney and stuff, I still didn't know how much time I'm going to get mm -hmm. up until the last like three months when it was going to be actually my sentencing. So my attorney called me and be like, Greg, come to the office. And like from his voice, I could hear like, Something, yeah. oh, it's bad. Right. You know what I mean? So I went into his office. I was like, so what is it? He's like 17 years. I'm like, what? 17 years? 17. Like what I do? Kill somebody, bro? Right, like right. what are you talking about? Like I didn't even do something like on a, like a massive scale. Right. You know what I mean? And I was like, wait, is that if I go to trial? And he's like, yeah. I said, I'm not going to trial with the feds. Like right. when those people come knock on your door, bro, they have everything they need. Like, yes. They're, right. I'm not going to trial. Right. I said, how how long is my deal? He's like two to eight years. I said, look, I'm I'm my crime is nonviolent, right? Mm -hmm. I've never I don't <clears throat> have a record. No priors. No priors. No nothing. So yeah. I said, what? No yes. <laughs> he, know. So so I was like, <laughs> really? Like, what's my deal? He's like two to eight years. I was like, just bring me the pen. Let me sign it. I knew the judge wouldn't max me out. Right. At eight years, because it's like. It's nonviolent. Right. I don't have a prior, you right. know, so. Right. Realistically, in my mind, I, I thought I was going to get, like, two years. Mm -hmm. So when I went, they just gave me four. Right. That's crazy. And then I ended up doing a little under three. Three, right. Yeah. Right. Wow. So that was, like, from, you said, was it 2016, 2019? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went in 2016. Mm -hmm. I was released 2019, beginning of 2019. Right. Mm -hmm. So take me, as, as a teenager, take me what you're feeling at this point. Like, okay. Because leading up to that, you at some point, like, you're living your life. You can't go anywhere. If you do, your mom's house is... Right. Yeah. So up in this point, you're just living your... Living your... Going about your daily life. Yeah. Almost like you're preparing. Are you... Yeah. Pre how are you preparing mentally? Well, I, I wasn't really <clears throat> preparing uh, until the last month. Because, like, I'm on pre-trial... For like eight nine months, right? Okay. You know, you just go, I mean? So you so go it's to like a court, process. Go I'm going to day. court. I'm going to the probation office, check it in. But you sleep so, at your house every day. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it's like on pause till you get to sentenced, mm -hmm. and then when they sentenced me, they sentenced me like I think two days after my birthday, which was June twenty second, and they gave me my surrender date, which was August. Okay. Mm -hmm. So literally, like from, I really felt it from. Being sentenced to a week after that is when they give you the official date mm -hmm. where you're supposed to go self-surrender. And then it's like, okay, it's real It's now. real. Right. right. It's real. You know what I mean? So, so can, can you just talk us through that? You surrender yourself. I, I'm like you. I've never been in jail. I ain't I'm nothing. Well, look, like, it's. I really don't. You hear stories, you know what right. I mean, through people. But, like, but then you got prisons of different levels. Right. right. So I'm best not, you can articulate like what were you feeling? Like say everybody's experience, like I said, is different. Yeah. Like what were you feeling? I mean You know I, what it was? It wasn't like I wasn't scared, but I was curious. Mm. It okay. was like, what's it what like what's it gonna be? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then were you in there? Okay, you get in there your your first day. Well, I already when when before I walked in, I knew people that were there already, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I know these people are there. Okay. So, you know, when I walked in, they greeted me. They took me, gave me a, like, MTV Cribs tour, you know? <laughs> right. I mean? now, now, did you did you get a nickname this time at no, least? No, no Still nickname. no nickname. No, still still square, square grade. grade. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> get your popcorn okay. ready. Yeah. I got my bit for this. This is a show yeah. today, guys. Okay. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, okay. this is a show today. Yeah. Okay. Still square grade. There, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Man. Okay, so in for three years three now. Three years. What was your plan when you got out or like when I get out I'm going to make the plan. Okay, the first thing I told myself and like like I for me it took me like about I would say a good 4 months to adapt mm -hmm. to where I am. Mm -hmm. Right? Then it becomes regular. It's like how you are on the streets. Like mm -hmm. you just tell yourself this is what it is. Like this is my life for now. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm in a small village and first day of school. Yeah, it's like this is it, it is what it is. <laughs> right. So really, what I really told myself is like, I, I looked at all my surrounding, and I was like, bro, there is nothing cool about this. Right. Mm. Like nothing. Spot. Mm. Like no, it's not like, at least for me, there is. It nothing might be a goal cool for other people, but right, right. at least for me as an individual, I was like, 
this this is nothing cool about this. The way I shower, the way I go to the bathroom, the what I eat, like. Right. And then so I told myself like, okay, if I have no prior, and the feds got me and gave me four years, if I go out, and I do it a second time, I'm getting ten years at least. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not gonna tell on nobody. I already know myself. Right, you know right. what I mean? I'm not cutting a like a deal like that, nothing. So it's like, do I wanna be 40, 40, mm. 50, and look back and be like, oh, I did 15, 16 years in prison? No. I don't want that for me. Mm-hmm. I know it happens to some people and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But if I could prepare for it not to happen, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Okay. So I wrote a few business plans. While you're in, while I'm in, okay. Mm. This is more towards like when I'm when I'm about to go out, and then it's like um, there's a misconception like everybody in prison is is a bad person, right. which is false. Yeah, you know what I mean? I think, I think we all. So I learned a that. lot from peop, other people doing time. Mm-hmm. I would sit. You have a lot of free time in prison. Mm-hmm. Like in the outside world, you don't have that free time. You're always on the go, running around. Right, you you trying to make money. You got stuff to do, responsibilities. In prison, you don't got nothing to do. Right, right. So, you have a lot of free time to really think. What do I want out of life? Mm-hmm. Like, what truly makes me happy, or what is my goal, or what do I want to achieve? What do I want my legacy to be? Mm-hmm. So, I was really thinking about all of this stuff, and then I just got to educating myself, reading books, talking to other individuals. Maybe I could learn. Because every, every person you talk to, you can learn from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What's one of the best stories you heard while you were in? Okay, so there was a... there, And it was it was, it was shocking because, like, really, really, like, I don't... This is what the guy told me, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know the exact, but from what he told me, I still remember his name was Arnie. He was, he was from Hawaii, grew up in a very wealthy family and whatnot. Smart guy. Mm-hmm. So he started, uh, pretty much, he started giving courses of how to do, like, tax write-offs and stuff. Wow. So, like, he had he had pictures with, like, Saudi guys, billionaires and whatnot. So he was giving them courses of not, no, illegal stuff, right. but how to legally take advantage of the, of the tax you know, codes. Tax codes, right. <clears throat> so I guess he grew to, like, about 150, 200 students or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the IRS came to him and told him, hey, stop. He's like, I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm just giving courses. Right. The second time they, the feds came, you better stop. Third time they busted him. So what didn't make sense, and I kind of understood what he's saying is true, is if, okay, if you're doing any sort of, like, white-collar crime, Mm -hmm. you get busted pretty much on what you stole or what you lied about or whatever it is, right? You Mm -hmm. have restitution. So Arnie had zero restitution. Mm-hmm. So if he didn't steal no money or he didn't do nothing crooked, mm-hmm. and why is he? They ended up giving him twelve years. Wow! And then in prison he turned into a pastor. Wow! I mean, dude was a very, very, very wealthy before prior right. to that. So he had in prison he had lost everything. Wow! That's, so and that's really just and then you to come help. and then you come across a lot, a lot, a lot of stories like that, man. Yeah. And then you just go like, oh wow! wow. So basically him giving information to kind of manipulate the, the system. system which yeah. everybody's doing anyway like they do anyway <laughs> he got busted yeah he got busted wow yeah. that is crazy man america is crazy man yes it isn't is. it yes, no it comments is. brother no comments. <laughs> <laughs> bro i mean it i really just agree is. with you yeah it is america is really <laughs> crazy at, at wow so okay so the, the business plan you were getting mm-hmm. those ready right. like, so what was your first business plan you so my first business plan was trucking Okay. Right, I, I had a goal. I want to get out, buy trucks, few of them, and have that rolling. Knew nothing about the business. Right, right. So I started reading books on it. Nice. Then I came across like so. I had that written down. My next one was a pharmacy, so I had that written down. Mm-hmm. And then my third one was was a body shop. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. So now I get out. I'm in the halfway house. Mm-hmm. Now I'm really looking at these business plans. Like now I got, I got six months. I put before, one of these in the Yeah, fruition. I got six months before I'm out of federal custody. That's when I got to take action, mm-hmm. right? So I, the trucking, I really looked into it. And the problem I came across is like long distance is the drivers, finding reliable drivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I kind of kicked that one off. Too, <laughs> right. Like, that right. ain't going to so, work. So that I was off. like, then it was pharmacy. 
government. It was, it was a great business plan, but hey, like you said, pharmacy that's too close to probably what he was already <laughs> yeah. doing. But 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 see, like like you said, it's government. My name is already in the FBI database, so yes. automatically anything I do, red flag. I was like, oh no, this is scratch that off. The so list. I was like, okay, now like if I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna wake up every day and I'm gonna give it my all mm. and I'm gonna go to the workplace and I got it gotta be something I'm passionate about. Absolutely. Like. I've had my business already. So I got out of federal custody February of 2019. I opened my shop March 1st of wow. 2019. Wow. And i just been grinding since then. It's never been a day I woke up and be like, shit, I got to go to work. Wow. That's an awesome story. Bro. So that's, that, awesome, that's man. cool in that sense. You know what I mean? <clears throat> that is fantastic. So I want to go to the, the, the exact reason you went to it. You said it was a 1028. Was it? 28 and a 1029. Yeah. So what is what is that exact, what is the, those codes? What does that it's mean? It's called aggravated identity theft. So pretty much my crime was credit card theft. Theft. That's that's the crime. So I remember okay. one time I was at okay. a Walmart and my credit card didn't work. I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 it's like, because everybody's been there. Everybody's had their credit card stolen, whatever. Um, uh, identity, yeah. Identity, I didn't, mean, right? You, you ain't lying. That's, it's, a, it's a headache. Oh, it's and it's worldwide. It's like worldwide. Yeah. Like the people who do it they could be in India or Saudi. Well, or now with the Europe. whole hackers and stuff, they could just pull the information right. online. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, so you started the shop, and then, I mean, obviously you're doing well. This is three years later, four years later now. Yeah. So, like, when did it really start to take off for you? Right, and, and, and I remember, too, we <clears> talked <throat> outside your shop. When you said you had 300000 Yeah, that's all I had. It was 300000 That's a good start. 300000 yeah, good start. Great start for anybody getting out of prison. Sure, there's <laughs> a lot of people that's working don't have that much. Get out of college, they don't, they right. 300000 in, in debt. <laughs> So you said 250 went into the shop and you yeah. had 50. Yeah, for, I just put that in the bank account. For, for payroll. Payroll, parts. I got to buy paint because I'm fixing cars. Right. And then what I, what I, the first thing I landed through the help of my brother-in-law, actually, because he was a tow truck driver. Um, he knew the guy, Avis rent a car right here mm -hmm. by LAX. Right. I got a contract with them. So it was like. I know I'm not going to make money off this contract, but at least it'll help me pay my rent and pay my employees. Consistent work. till I figure something out. Yeah. Um, so I kept that probably like four months, and then I canceled them. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I just came across like just people. Because like I say, whether it's in the business world or whatever, if you, I, don't, I don't believe in I could do everything alone. Right. You know what I right. mean? Okay. Like I would say like... A uh, business is no different than a, than a than a sports team, right? You have good group of teammates. Yep. You're gonna be successful. You don't Bad locker you're, room. You're not, you, you know away. what I mean? So, I I always said like number one, I'm gonna always act like an employee. I'm gonna go in and work with them every day. So number one, they respect me, and I respect them too, right? Right. And then I was like, as a business owner. Like, I got to be a coach. I got to be a good facilitator. Right. You know what I mean? So I just <laughs> always kept that attitude. Right. And then, like, always people tell me, like, Greg, you're working too much. Go no to such me. thing. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> no to, such thing like honestly, working. like, to me, it doesn't feel like work. Right. Because you love what you're doing. Yeah, I like, I like what, what I love. do. And then, like, look, the one thing I like about really what I do is, like, the type of people I meet. Mm-hmm. I meet different type of, like, really good people. Mm -hmm. And then it's like that customer turns into a friend. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like just the way I, I met Teal and I'm here today. You know right. what I mean? Right. Right. What was like, the first, like, uh, again, you're, you're getting the company started. What was that first deal that came through or that first relationship that came through? You were like, look, if I can do this with this person, right. I'm going to start getting with, you know, making a lot more money. Um, It might sound cliche or... I never had that in my mind. Right. Right? It's like the way I look at it, okay, if, if you're going to bring me business, I got to meet you halfway. Mm -hmm. So if you're grinding for my business and I'm just sitting there in the office folding my arms, I'm going to fail. Right. Because that's my baby. Right. You know right. what I mean? So how did you become so successful? How is the business so successful today then? Right. 
I mean, just through it, like it's a little bit of luck. You could say that, but obviously, you you've done, you've created something. Like done your homework. You like hard look, to I, do. I believe in luck. I believe in luck, but I also f- believe in creating your own luck. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's like, if I was to say luck, it's I would only relay that to the people I came across and I, like I had the opportunity to meet. Mm-hmm. That I, but then what comes in is your character. If you could hold your word, yes, right. I believe in like good way of doing business. The way I think now is like, okay, like if Tio brings me his car, and I know if I say ten thousand, Tio is gonna give me ten thousand. Mm-hmm. But then he might might never see him again, because mm-hmm. he's one day he's gonna go tell his friend, I paid ten. Oh, you got ripped off. Right. You, so I'm gonna give Tio a good price. But now if I give him a good price and I give him quality work, tell his friends. Right. He's not gonna go. Hey, how much do you charge? How much do you charge? He's gonna be like, "Oh, Greg's the guy." Because he I'm, go, yeah, he go right? hook it up. Because I know he's not ripping me off, and I'm getting quality work. Yeah. You're established, right? So you I always, I always kept it in that, and I was like, I'll, "I want to make a little money and make it forever." Mm. In the past, like, see, I made big Most money, money. quick money, <laughs> but it was temporary. Yes. Right? I don't want to have that temporary money no more. I just want to be secure. And then, the more work I put in the more individuals I meet. Mm. So now that little money adds on to little money, to little money, to little money, and then you're like, oh, I'm making this much money. Well, let's see how much you've learned throughout this process. Now what are you doing for life after? What are you doing for the 10-year plan, the 20-year plan? Okay, so so pretty much right now, um, my 10-year plan, I just started. Well, my new location that I moved into cost me a million plus. Let's go back to your regular location. Let, yeah. Matter of fact, let everybody know. We'll say it at the end as well. But let everybody. Where's the original location? My original location. The auto was, Group, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still the same name. I was just at a like a different location, okay. physical location. So that was about like seven thousand square feet. Mm-hmm. I pretty much had four bays, and one of the bays was the spray booth. Okay. So so I kind of started little office. So I kind of started from there. I was there for three years. Okay. And then I've been at my new location. April 1st marked the year. Okay. And where is that at? That's in the city of Reseda. Reseda, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Auto, auto Group in Reseda, California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's yeah. the name is RR Auto Group. RR Auto Group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And can you make one of those big, the, it's the paint for the car, right? Yeah. I would love to put T in there and just turn it on like a like a silver or white color <laughs> and just spray them down for like about 30 minutes. Can we do that? Can we make that happen? You... I'll give you the boot. You can do that. <laughs> I can not, hit the button? Yeah, you can hit the button. No, <laughs> that'll be fun, dog. Let's try that. Let's try that. That'd be really? fun. Really? Yeah. How just about, for the we, kids, just, just how for about we just just spray for your forehead? Okay, how we can do that, that, too. We can do that, too. <laughs> this dude. Yeah, so, man, amazing story. That's awesome, man. Very successful. <clears throat> I mean, what would you tell, what you've learned? Mm. You got a 15, 16, 7-year-old kid. Yeah. Going down the wrong path, knowing what you've gone through, what would yeah. you tell a kid today yeah. to prevent them from going down your path? Because you've already experienced it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You knew you know the consequence. You knew the consequences going yeah. into it. Said mm-hmm. it's not the spot. Right. right. You I mean, you already said, hey, look, this is what I gotta do. If I gotta get twenty five to life, this is what I gotta get. What would you tell a kid that's listening or mom or Dad or granddad, grandma, uncle, aunt. Like I could only I could only tell people what I felt. You know what I mean? And I didn't feel that really till it hit me. Like till I got out, I opened my business and I started doing good for myself. It's like, wow, bro, I'm I put the same effort mm-hmm. into something wrong, mm-hmm. and it was temporary. Led me to destruction. Mm-hmm. A lot of stress. A lot of the whatever that comes with the whole street stuff, lying and, you know, fighting and all of that stuff. And now I'm doing this with the same effort and I'm getting more ahead in life. Whereas for it's something that's building. And then like in the in the past, like you would go somewhere, you would come across like what do you do? Oh. Well, what do you Whereas mean? like, what do you do now? Oh, I own a collision center. Mm-hmm. Not not in the sense of like shit, you don't gotta hide nothing. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. And then you tell yourself like, "Hey, man, like I'm in, I'm happier now. Yeah. You right. have some pride about yourself. Like right. I'm happier now than what I was before. Yeah. 
and then I grew more as an individual. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But when you like, I don't believe in the sense of you can tell someone or people. I feel like you gotta really want it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. So, True. Yeah. That's even even in our sports. You, yeah. know, you got you know you got to tell kids, and I'm sure he he coaches a lot of kids, see kids on a daily basis, and he sees the different personalities, sees yeah. the different talents. Um, he going through and how he grew up playing different levels, knowing that there's different levels to mm-hmm. to this shit, like yeah. everybody says. Yeah, it's levels uh, to and this. you have to, with our experience be able to try to mold and groom these kids and keep them on the right path and steer them the right way. But again, you know, these kids, they have their own minds, they have their own motives. Um, Mm -hmm. And for us, we try to use our experience to try to mold and guide them in the right way, the best we can. Um, Understanding like, hey, these kids are, at some point they think they're grown. um, (laughs) They know it all. Right, exactly. (laughs) We we try to do our best to kind of just at least share some words of encouragement, wisdom, whatever that may be to – keep them on the right path and hope they stay on that. But at the end of the day, like I said, we've all seen, you know, the bad experiences. You know, we've seen other people go through things that we're trying to do and knowing the outcome but still do it anyway. Yeah. And sometimes you have to hit your set, you hit your head upside the wall yeah. on the wall yeah. to actually straighten up or get on the, you know, straight also, also like, path. I've been young too, so like also like look like not a lot of kids get the opportunity to meet people like you. You know what I mean? Right. It's different when you're a kid, because I've been there too. I'm sure we all been there. Mm-hmm. When you come across someone that really made it, and you take their advice, it's different. It's, it's different. like, oh, this man made it, so I, I, they admire you more. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Right. Right. So, because we also come across the kids, and especially you know, in the last probably five to ten years, it's like, or since he went to the hall. Right, we'll have a kid who is still in the streets, but he's a super good athlete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Straddling the fence. Straddling the fence, and then they still choose the street side, and then they want to come back and do the athlete thing after they get out at 24 and 25, and we're like, oh, I wish you would have listened. Mm-hmm. They don't always listen. And it's that we temptation, sit there and say, man. Yeah, it's that it's, temptation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, it gets the best of you. Yeah, right. sometimes. And then that's why, too, that's why I asked you, because you've been there. Like, you've been that, like you said, you've been that kid. You know, and through your testimony, through you being here on Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast today is like you're sharing your story of those kids are going to be you one day. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully they don't in the in the bad sense. But in the good sense. Yeah. Right. But they have an example of what not to do. But they also have an example of you can bounce back based on. Oh, yeah. I, I don't believe in that. It's ever too late. You just right. really gotta want something, right? And not, and not get scared from working hard for it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Any, like I say, anything worth having in life is gonna take hard work and sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Without Absolutely. those two, you can't you can't reach it. Whether it's if you want to have a beautiful family, if you want to have a good career or or a good friendship, you know what I mean? Right. Gotta you always out. gotta give and get. Yeah. It's never it's never get only. Yeah. You got to right. give too. You right. know what I mean? That's awesome. And say you, we're, we're giving you this opportunity, right? And so what we're getting from this is this white ghost out in the parking lot, right? Yeah. We're getting the rose. <laughs> so we've got to make sure we get that, <laughs> get some pictures of that when we, uh, when we leave when, out of here. Whatever so, you need, my brother. Yeah. There, You heard him, right? It's contractual. It's yeah. all on TV. No, I just want to say thank you again. Yeah, make sure you let everybody know where they guys, can find man. you on IG and Twitter and social media as well. Okay, so as far as the business goes, um, the Instagram, you can find it on RR Auto Group LA. Uh, you'll see this logo right there. There it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we're located in the city of Reseda. So usually, like, we get a lot of DMs through mm-hmm. Instagram of people, what they want. Mm-hmm. Uh, we pretty much specialize in all sort of collision accidents. We work with all the insurance companies. And customization, pretty much anything you could imagine we could get done. Yep, yep. He did that. Customizing cars and putting yep. wraps on, rims, yep. uh, decal, name. logos. Yeah, yeah I got put, one put done. His, I think you yep, put yep. his face on the mirror or whatever, something. Whatever, like whatever. It's going to be something hey, crazy. It's, it's where if, he can, if it can be done, <laughs> this guy can do it. R&R, <laughs> yeah. they can do it. There it so, is. So, yeah. Hey, Junior, can you bring that, uh, that, 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 uh, that little piece of uh, equipment in here so I can uh, give it to my man? We got we got some uh, Junior. 
We got some equipment. We got a we got yeah, a little yeah. Uh, gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got yeah, a gift yeah. that keeps on giving. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. It ain't it, it ain't the, it ain't the jersey, but I got him a helmet. Hey, I got him a forty nine helmet. Hey, hey. If I come, ac- if I come okay. across, I got you. I'ma sign I it right here. You, man. I'm, I'ma sign it right here. If I come across that jersey, I got you. I know you've been looking all over the place. Yeah, I've been looking all over. <laughs> the place. But I trust me. You know, my word is bun. I'm one. I follow through. But I this is what I came you, across brother. today. <clears throat> we gonna give you this helmet. That's all right, buddy. We gonna put this in the shop. Yeah, yeah wherever you okay. want. I'm gonna frame it too. You, frame yeah. it? you need to put his head in there. Oh, uh, go ahead on, that. man. Go ahead on, man. <laughs> How about that? Do that. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. Got my man right here. Man, I appreciate you, my brother. Yes, sir. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah, man. It's a great yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. yeah my man, good great. Work. And once again, Sorry, man, brother. thank you for having me. You know, I'm yeah. just an ordinary guy to be on a podcast like this to even have the opportunity. Like Amen. I said, it also has to do with the great people I've met, like Junior. Junior introduced me to T.O., you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like that's that's why I believe treat people right always because you don't know what that could lead to. Absolutely. You know what I Amen. mean? I'm a true believer in that. I, the word you use, ordinary people always ask me about my career, this and that and the other, and how I did this. I, I too, say that I'm ordinary. I just happen to do some extraordinary things, yeah. you know what I mean? So don't ever consider yourself ordinary, even though, like I said, that's just the humble being that you are. But I, I tell people the same. the same. I'm like, I'm just an ordinary guy. I just happen to do some extraordinary things on the football field. So, man, you've done, you know, you've done the time. Not some, that, That's not something to be proud of. But guess what? You've helped a lot of people by sharing your story today, you know what I mean? And like appreciate I said, we you. appreciate you coming on on the show, man, giving us some little bits and uh, nuggets to, to really for all our, you know, viewers out there that's that's watching this. Like I said, it's, you know, you never know who's going to pop up on the Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast yeah, show. There so, it is. I mean, as soon as we talked, I was like, man, we got to get this guy on the show, man. So appreciate your time. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate Junior. So, yeah, man. There's GP yep, in yep. the building. Auto GP. Group. Go check on it GPR. out. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> GP on GPR. Peace. I'll let y'all. Yeah.